three for the two of the types of fishes, three for the diet. Um, okay, someone has asked me a question about this problem, which I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on for a moment. Okay. Um, so for the limit as x approaches 3 from the right, when we plug in a 3 just to check it, we get something that is not 0 over 0. As soon as you get not 0 over 0, you have a vertical asymptote. And when you have a vertical asymptote, the left and right-handed limits will approach infinity. It'll either be positive or negative. So you know it's going to be an infinity. How do you know which one? Pick a number close to 3 from the right, like 3.1. And you plug it in. And on top, it's 1,000 minus around 9. It's totally positive. And on the bottom, 3.1 minus 3 is positive. So you get a positive or a positive, so it's positive. OK? Good. Any other questions on the POD? All right, good. All right, so horizontal asymptotes. I am once I get it set up. Okay. Okay. The, <laughs> the horizontal asymptotes of a function are the limit values as x approaches infinity and negative infinity. Horizontal asymptotes are not electric fences. Horizontal asymptotes are descriptions of end behavior. I'm going to flip the screen so I can see where I'm looking here. Okay, so here's the thing. You've got, oh, it's way too much me. I don't think actors are supposed to talk to the camera in this part. Okay. So here's the thing. When you have a function, the end behavior, if the y values flatten out towards one specific value, or and at this end, one specific value, those are the horizontal asymptotes. It doesn't matter what happens in the middle. So a function could cross over a horizontal asymptote a thousand times. It's not like an electric fence where you can't cross it. The function can cross it a billion times. It's just a description of the end, what's happening out here. Does it flatten out to one y value? If it does, then that's considered a horizontal asymptote. All right? So the horizontal asymptotes are the behavior that the function has way out at the very far ends when x is infinity or x is negative infinity. All right, so the limits as x approaches infinity and negative infinity are the same as the horizontal asymptotes and vice versa. Horizontal asymptotes are the limits in infinity. Limits in infinity are the horizontal asymptotes. Do you understand that? Okay. Which means the three horizontal asymptote rules that we discussed during the pre-calc review. There we go. I need to lower it a little. During the pre-calc review, um, we're going to use today to find a bunch of limits. So I'm going to put some limits on the board that I want you guys to try. You're going to use horizontal asymptotes to find the following limits. And remember, if the degree at the top is bigger, there's no horizontal asymptote. If the degrees are the same, how do you find it? You divide the coefficients. Divide the leading coefficients. And then if the bottom is bigger, it's what? Zero. Zero. When you have a straightforward rational function, which is just a polynomial divided by a polynomial, then the limit, there is only one horizontal asymptote at both ends. Alright, and C, let Alright, so in your groups, take one minute and do all four of these. It shouldn't take you much longer than just the time it takes to write down the answers. But make sure you check against your group members to see if you match.
I have to write down the problem too. That's what I just think of here. we're looking at. So the degrees are the same, so how do we find the horizontal asymptote? Divide, Divide the leading coefficient. So of course we get three fifths? No. 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 Negative three over two. Negative three over two. Okay, right, because um, the leading coefficient is the coefficient of the variable with the highest exponent, right? So this would be 3 over negative 2, which you could also write as negative 3 halves, or however you want to write it. All right, good. What about this one? Ditto. Ditto. They are the same. When you are talking about a simple rational function, when you have a polynomial over a polynomial, there's just one horizontal asymptote, and it's the same in both directions. So the limit as you approach positive infinity and negative infinity will be the same answer. All right? Okay. Here, we have the limit as x approaches infinity. Is the top bigger? Are they the same or is the bottom bigger? Bottom bigger. Bottom bigger. So what is the limit? Zero. zero. Bottom bigger is zero. Now, you don't write y equals zero. We're not asking for the equation of the horizontal asymptote. We're just asking for the value of the limit, which is just the number zero. Okay? Are there questions on those? Okay. So that's a lot of your homework tonight. It's just recognizing your horizontal asymptote rules and putting down the answer. But we also have to learn how to do problems of this type, which would be the limit as x approaches infinity of 3x squared plus 1 over 5 minus 2x, and the limit as x approaches negative infinity of 3x squared plus 1 over 5 minus 2x. So now for these, we have the degree of the top bigger. Then this is no. Okay. Now, you're correct there's no horizontal asymptote. So is the limit as x approaches infinity, the answer would be none? No. No. So here's the thing. Simple rational functions they're either going to flatten out, or they're going to go up, or they're going to go down, right? So the answer to all of these is either going to be a number that's the horizontal asymptote, 
positive infinity if it goes up or negative infinity if it goes down. So we just we know that both of these, whenever you have a horizontal asymptote, top figure, well, there's, when there's no horizontal asymptote, you've got a limit as x approaches infinity. The answer is going to be an infinity. But we need to know if it's positive or negative. How do we know which one? Plug in the infinity and check the signs. So I'm going to even write this over here. Plug in infinity and check the signs. So for this one, if I plug in infinity on top, 3 times infinity squared plus 1 is what? Positive. Positive. 5 minus 2 times infinity is? Negative. negative. A positive over a negative, negative. is a negative. Okay? For this one, I have 3 times negative infinity squared plus 1. What's that? Positive. Positive. On the bottom, I have 5 minus 2 times negative infinity. Negative. 5 minus 2 times negative Think of it, 5 minus 2 times negative infinity. It's the same thing as 5 plus 2 times infinity, right? It ends up being positive. You get a positive over positive, this one is positive. Yes, right. Oh, um, for D, if your denominator was uh, square rooted, that's the that's a whole different thing. We're about to get into that. How did you think of that? Well, because like, because he read the review like, from Mr. Ying. Okay. Yeah, we're about to do that type of problem. But if you have a proportion of the top to the bottom, if you were to either square that or square the denominator of the top. Like, would it change, like, whether you can do the... We can only do the horizontal asymptote rules for simple, rational functions. When I say polynomial over polynomial, I mean polynomial over polynomial, not polynomial over radical. So what I'm about to show you now is what you can do when you have polynomial over radical. Are you ready? No, I can't. There are so many different ways to approach these problems, you know what, I'm going to rewrite it first. I'm going to write it like this. Find all horizontal asymptotes for y equals negative 2x plus 6 over the square root of 5x squared plus 1. I think what we do is we uh, square the top and bottom. Ooh, can you just square the top and bottom? Because then you get rid of your radical, right? And you'd have two polynomials. Well, you can't so what you're saying is if I square the top and bottom of a fraction, well, I get an equivalent like fraction? That, it sounds stupid. It sounds <laughs> smart at the moment. No, the reason I, I joke about this is because on your pre-calc test, tons of you did that. Right? Did. You're finding domain. Goodness. Tons of you did that. So, guys, you can't square top and bottom of a fraction and get an equivalent fraction. It just does mm -hmm. not work. Right. Do you guys also understand with fractions, the reason that you're allowed to multiply top and bottom by the same number is because what are you actually multiplying by? One. One. That doesn't mean you can just go willy-nilly and do anything you want to the top and the bottom. Right? You have to do, it's a fraction, so you have to multiply by an equivalent number to one. You can't square. All right. So what can we do? That's okay. Oh, I'm so sorry. All right, so here we go. Limit as x approaches infinity of, when you're finding horizontal asymptotes, you have to do the limit as x approaches infinity and the limit as x approaches negative infinity because they might be different. For simple rational functions, for polynomial over polynomial, then they'll be the same. But when we're talking about these kinds of functions with radicals, they, they are probably going to be different. Okay, so there are so many different ways to do these problems. I have taught this in a different way every year that I've taught calculus. And I've finally settled on the way that I like the best. The way that I teach it is going to be different 
from the way Jones teaches it and different from the way Yang teaches it if I am familiar, if I remember right on how I think they do it. So what they do is they multiply top and bottom by an equivalent of 1 over x, which is totally fine. It's a great method. But I think it's a little um, more complicated than it has to be. So what I'm going to show you is this. When you're finding horizontal asymptotes, if the function, no matter how complicated it is, right, if I have a function, say the function is like 3x to the fourth minus 8x cubed plus 5x minus 16 over 26x to the fourth plus 10,000. What's the only part that's important for the horizontal asymptote? The first. Degree. The leading coefficients, right? Right. Everything else is irrelevant. Because when you're talking about infinity, infinity to the fourth kills everything else that's after it. The biggest one wins. So what happens is when we're talking about going to infinity, all this other stuff after the leading the term becomes completely irrelevant. So you can say that this limit is equal to this limit and you would be telling the truth. This would be a true statement. Now, how do I do this? Multiply top and bottom by Okay, you can split up a radical if you're multiplying. You can't split up if you're adding, but you can split up if you're multiplying. You all with me so far? What's the square root of x squared? It is x if x is positive. When we're approaching positive infinity, is x positive? Hey, look at that. This is a polynomial over a polynomial. Bam, what's the limit? Duh. Oh, anything that's after the leading terms can be dropped when you're talking about limits that approach infinity. Oh. Yeah. All right, when we talk about the limit as x approaches negative infinity, again, go ahead and get us down. You guys write the next step. Let's see what you get. Write the next two steps. Yes. Oh, okay. That's okay. All right. Okay, guys, we'll finish up this problem tomorrow.